In the light of the strike on Kaspisk, Russia needs to understand the capabilities of Ukrainian drones. Drones can target not only ships, but airborne targets as well, says military expert and retired Ukrainian Armed Forces Major Oleksiy Hetman in a comment to RBC Ukraine. This indicates that we have drones capable of reaching that distance. We've known this before. They have already reached targets. Now the enemy should understand that there isn't a single city in Russia that we can't reach. The expert said. He added that while Ukraine can currently reach deep targets within Russia with drones, these drones cannot carry large amounts of explosives. This is important for causing significant destruction. Hetman recalled that the Caspian Sea is a launch site for missiles from Tu-95MS aircraft. Therefore, the Russians should understand the potential threat. I think the Russians are starting to realize that drones can attack not only ships, but potentially airborne targets as well. Our drones are already attacking Russian drones. And I think if a drone is controlled externally rather than by an internal inertial program, it can potentially be guided to hit a bomber. This is an assumption, the expert stated. He emphasized that he was not asserting the existence of such technology, but did not rule out that if drones can reach and strike targets on water or land, they might also hit airborne targets. It may not be as powerful a means of air defense as our Patriot or other complexes we use, but it would be desirable to assume so, Hetman added. For the first time, drones from the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine's Ministry of Defense attacked an enemy flotilla in the Caspian Sea. This flotilla had participated in shelling Ukraine and the 177th Naval Infantry Regiment was involved in combat in the Kherson and Zaporizhia regions. The distance from the target in the city of Kaspisk, Republic of Dagestan, Russia, to Ukraine's border was approximately 1,500 kilometers. According to RBC Ukraine sources, missile ships Tatarstan and Dagestan, as well as small missile ships of Project 21631, may have been damaged. An Iranian F-4 fighter was mistakenly shot down by Iranian air defense in the Kermanshah region, Aviopromedia outlet reports this. There is no data confirming the incident yet, but the Simorg news agency reports that a military aircraft crashed near Mount Biston. According to eyewitnesses, after the incident, security forces immediately blocked the section of the road from Biston to Dinvar, restricting traffic for the operation. Local residents confirm that security services and the military are working at the site, but there are no official comments yet on the causes and consequences of the plane crash. Iran's air defense system remains imperfect, with a number of vulnerabilities in detecting and intercepting modern high-speed and stealth targets, reducing its effectiveness against advanced air threats. Given the mountainous region, the aircraft could well have been identified as a hostile target. The Iranian Air Force has a total of 63 F-4 Phantoms, specifically the F-4D, F-4E, and RF-4E variants. The F-4E was indeed the last variant of the venerable Phantom to be built, produced between 1965 and 1973. The planes were sold to Iran when it was still under the rule of Mohammad Reza Shah, who was a staunch ally of both the United States and Israel. Polish Foreign Minister Radoslaw Sikorski believes that the issue of intercepting Russian missiles over Ukraine by member states may be raised at the next NATO ministerial meeting. He said this on TVN24. According to Sikorski, the discussion of the possibility of destroying missiles outside of Ukrainian territory should be considered in the context of self-defense. Next week, there will be a regular NATO ministerial meeting. Perhaps this issue will be on the agenda, the Polish minister said. Sikorsky also spoke about relations with Ukraine and commented on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's request to shoot down Russian missiles flying towards Poland before they cross the country's border. He noted that this raises the question of where the right to self-defense begins and ends. Do we have the right to shoot down such a missile only when it is over our territory? In this case, there is no doubt, but then there may be risks. As happened in Przewodów, where the missile debris caused damage, injured or even killed people. 
Sikorsky said. He added that there may be different opinions on Ukraine's request, and this issue requires discussion and agreement among allies. Recently, the U.S. Helsinki Commission asked President Joe Biden to allow Poland to shoot down missiles over Ukraine. President Volodymyr Zelensky stated in July that Ukraine and Poland are working on creating a mechanism that will allow Polish air defense to track missiles and drones over Ukrainian territory. For this part, the Polish Minister of Defense noted that before making such a decision, Warsaw needs to consult with its NATO partners. At the same time, Dutch Defense Minister Ruben Breckelmans stated that the possibility of partner countries shooting down missiles and drones from Russia over Ukraine poses more risks than benefits. He added that this is exactly the type of escalation that NATO allies are trying to prevent. Breckelmans believes that this approach of the partners is also in favor of Ukraine. We should always look for creative ways to help Ukraine, but we also have to weigh the benefits against the risks in each case. So far, there is no difference. This is the approved decision, summarized the Dutch defense minister. California was lashed by powerful winds Wednesday that fed a fast-moving wildfire, which destroyed dozens of homes and forced thousands of residents to flee as forecasters warned of the potential for extreme and life-threatening blazes. Northwest of Los Angeles, the mountain fire exploded in size and prompted evacuation orders for more than 10,000 people as it threatened 3,500 structures in suburban communities, ranches and agricultural areas around Camarillo, according to a statement from Governor Gavin Newsom. The erratic winds and limited visibility grounded fixed-wing aircraft. Meanwhile, another fire burned near multi-million dollar properties along the Pacific Coast Highway in Malibu. The National Weather Service has amended its red flag warning for increased fire danger with a rare, particularly dangerous situation label.